Hi everybody. Hey. We hey. had the premiere on today's show. Yeah, we did actually. Yep. Chrissy Swan as well. Chrissy Swan. That was yeah. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I complained. Sean has been teaching me to complain more because I never ever cause a fuss. <laughs> to an answering machine. And you machine. still kind of haven't. <laughs> to an answering machine. <laughs> <I know. laughs> we, we have a chat about uh, when you're a minute into something and you've gone, oh my God, this is not for me. And when uh, you're trying to call somebody and they don't answer. This is Nathan, Matt and Sean. Uh, the Rotten Nest Swim done and dusted for another year and it was great to be able to finish it f- because uh, it was tough conditions um, on yes. the weekend. It was really hard. Swell was there and the winds were terrible for yep. swimming over there. Um, miraculously enough, the guy who set, who won it swam it in like just over four hours. <laughs> It's amazing. Are you it's solo. And, that, and, so, and the women's it was, was like four hours 20. It was a sprint for the finish. Yeah, there, there were two of them very close together after swimming 20 days. <laughs> it's That's mad. They actually got out and ran over the line. It was just it's oh. incredible. They got out and ran. Yes. Yeah, they, have to run like, to they were cross diving the in the water. You know, when you get to the shallow water you see in the Ironman when they start doing that dolphin dive in and they yeah. and, and they just keep getting. Yeah. I and then would they be up the hill. dragging myself to the yes. finish line via my chin. <laughs> oh, no. That's how I was feeling, Nathan, doing it. And she Shout out to my members of the my our team, um, Lee, Jen, and Mel, who all swam amazingly. Yes. We had Aaron, obviously, who skipped, and his brother Chad and Sam, who was paddling for us. They were all fantastic. And you raised over a hundred thousand dollars for the Style Out Foundation, which is amazing. Yeah, that is an amazing yeah. effort. And for everyone who donated, um, thank you very, very much. That's uh, going to go to an, an amazing cause. Yep. So all that said, it was it was great. But I can tell you, when we jumped in the uh, boat and we went out to um, off Cottesloe to yes. wait for Lee to do the first leg and yep. I was looking at all the people and the I was looking at the swell around. and I was looking at the win. I thought this is going to be a hell of a long day yeah. and might be much fun. First time I jumped into the water, I was telling Nathan when I came in, I was shitting bricks. Yeah, it's the only way to say it. Because yep. so it, it was sharky. You were worried about sharky. Sharks. Yes, the elements, how deep it was, even said you yeah. scared you. Because my I had um, new goggles on and oh, um, God, it was so clear. To see. <laughs> it was so clear. <laughs> no, and uh, you're just waiting for something to pop out. Yeah, you do. You want to wear those drunk goggles yeah, that they so put yeah, on yeah, at yeah. science displays. Oh, 100 percent. So anyway, um, that was hard going, and it was hard going for everyone. So much so that the amount of times. We were sitting in the boat in the first ten to twenty minutes that were people were pulling out of the race. I've never heard it so much. So in my if life. you want to withdraw, you've got to say it over the radio. Is you that do. How it you works? have to say. Yeah. I, I would like to VW. It's like <laughs> SAS Australia. Yeah, right. <laughs> there are a lot of Bryn Edelston. Oh, uh, there were so many people. There were so many people throughout the day that got seasick and they. Um, probably realised, oh, I'm not much of a boaty person. It probably wasn't a great idea to be out here, let alone the swimmers who'd obviously been training for quite now, some time yes. and they were pulling out because of those conditions. I'm guessing a lot of those people that were pulling out, right, weren't attached to a charity. And that's why you, even if you were yes. feeling the same way, could not have pulled out no. because you're attached to a charity and people had raised money. So that's, yeah. I mean, you feel sorry for the people that quit, but the people that wanted to quit and couldn't, and <laughs> that is the worst case scenario. Too committed you, to quit. One of the one, the worst thing for me, and I kept saying it all morning for the first half of our of our race was, so picture all the boats as you see from the coast. They're in like a, a channel, if you like, yes. and they're all together and they go from Cottesloe Beach to Rotto. Well, because of the currents, our team does decided to go about 100 metres south of the rest of the yeah, boats. Right. So we were nowhere near anyone yeah. else. And that's why my heart was beating yeah, so, out of my chest. Because you're on your own. Easily, I want to be the easily pack pick, I want to be swimming next yeah. to you picked guys. Picked off the yeah. edge of the herd. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the, the injured one. only thing I got to compare that with, Sean, is remember years ago um, after Big Brother was Friday Night Games. It was hosted yeah. by Fitzy and Bree, actually. Yeah, I remember then, that. Um, so it used to be just for the housemates. Then they opened it up for um, you know other people on TV to do it. And I was in a, a, a Big Brother team and we are going against an Australian Idol team like Rob Mills and stuff like that and beforehand they had a questionnaire on there and saying what is your fitness level and I went hey <laughs> <laughs> and anyway literally We're playing right. for a children's charity as well I was that it was the first obstacle course and I was probably 30 seconds in to that obstacle course I remember there was a big um, uh, obstacle thing that was covered in like what seemed to be slime and it was just really hard to get over like one of the mounds yeah my lungs were burning and I wanted to quit right there and then and I was stuck in it the entire night because it was on TV and because it was for a charity. Ready to hit the road this summer? It's time to What If It. Visit whatif.com to plan and book your accommodation, flights, activities, even car hire. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable. Booking cancellation windows apply. What If? It's Aussie for travel. Check government advisories before booking and travelling.
It was the Rotto Swim on Saturday and there were a lot of very early withdrawals in tough conditions when people realised early on, oh no, this is not yeah. for me. What have I got myself into? Unfortunately for Sean McManus, um, he could not be one of those withdrawals even though he was feeling the same way because he was raising an amazing oh, amount never of money quit. for you a charity. Never, I would never quit. I'm not a quitter, but I was definitely so nervous when I jumped in that water. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Tunes in Armidale. Morning, June. Morning. How are you this morning? Hi, June. Jane. When did you realise very early on that something just wasn't for you? Yeah, about the first two days after I'd read what you meant to do, and you've got to go from page one to page sixteen, back to page two, up to page three, around to page fourteen, down to page three, and and I was just like, oh my god, this is way too hard. I can't do it. What, what were you what doing? doing, June? Oh, it's a training and assessment course, and it's so disjointed. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, like, yeah, no, I mm. didn't do it. You know what? When you can't handle reading the booklet of what you need to do <laughs> in order to finish the course, <laughs> then that's a clear already. indication that you're not going to be able to complete the course. <laughs> no, that's what I did you stick it through or did you quit, Jean? Oh, I quit. Yeah. Oh, no, no, okay. no, shame and quitting. That's okay. You weren't doing <laughs> the course for, for charity. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> true. Thanks, June. Uh, Charlotte's in Burns Beach. Hello. Hi. How are you guys? Hi, Hi Charlotte. Charlotte. When did you know almost immediately that it just wasn't for you? <laughs> so I went for a job interview mm. and it was to manage a sports store. And I was in the sports store at the time having the interview and he said to me, look, part of it, if you're the manager, is you've got to go out to our warehouse. And he said, when you go, you've got to climb the ladder, so I have to tell you now, are you okay with heights? And I looked. Oh, I the thought you meant corporate thought, ladder. <laughs> corporate ladder. <laughs> no, a no, an ladder. actual ladder. Okay, keep going. <laughs> an actual ladder. So I looked around the store and I saw a little step ladder and I was like, oh, look, I can do that. I am afraid of heights yeah. and ladders, but yeah. I was like, I- I'm pretty confident I can do that. Like I could reach the top shelf. I'm really, really short too with a couple of steps. Yes. yes. Anyway, so first day, he's like, like, let's go to the warehouse. I get there. It's one of those giant <laughs> ladders that's like as tall as a hotel. Okay, I'm probably exaggerating a bit, but, you know, yeah, two yeah. stories attached yeah. to the actual side of the shelving and you had to put a safety harness on. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I start climbing. My legs are like jelly. I literally get like four steps and he's like, are you okay? And I was like, no, I there's no way I can do this. And he was like, "Okay, get down. I can see your terrified. Get, da- get yes. down. Get <laughs> down." So, yeah, so what happened with the just... job? Well, actually, he was lovely, and he turned around and he said, "Look, I really, really like you. I want to give you the job. So, you know what? I'm going to send the boys out to do it, and you'd never have to have that as part of Score! your job." Oh, that is so lovely, oh, Charlotte. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> That's a really well, good idea well. for when you go for a new job and they show you a task you don't want to do, act terrified. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm happy to do everything else except that. Nathan, Nat and Sean. We're talking about when you're just a few minutes into something mm. and then you realise, oh, this isn't for me. A lot of people pulled out of the Rotnest swim before their first swim or even made it to yeah. the boat. Right? Oh, I've never heard so many people who um, didn't finish that. No, yeah. the two-way, you're just going, here's another one. Just pull yeah, it out. drop yeah. it like flies. Oh, a couple of minutes in, you're like, no, thank you. All right, let's go to Raylene in Spearwood. Hi, Raylene. Good morning, guys. I love you. You make my day every day. Raylene, Raylene. are you kidding me? Sean, (laughs) give her everything we've got. (laughs) You load up my day every day. You've just won this bottle of Reef. (laughs) Sean, no, no, no. no, We we can't give that away. We never give that away. We take it back. Um, (laughs) We still love you, though, Raylene. What uh, what happened? What's your story? Um, I got married and about... (laughs) Half a day into it, I realised that I, <laughs> I really probably shouldn't have done Raylene. it. That's a big commitment, but, Raylene. But I, I, I wasn't going to be a quitter, Sean. I felt like <laughs> that it wasn't yeah. charity, yeah. but it was a lot of money. Yep. And, yeah. <laughs> and so I stuck it out for well, two and a half years. Oh, and, uh, Yeah. So... Um, I think the charity, I probably should have just given the money to charity. It would have probably turned out uh, a lot yeah, more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Raylene, what? Fair effort. So, so, throughout the the wedding, so what yes. was it the thing that just like went, what, the, yes. Raylene, you've made a mistake. 
It was on the way, after the wedding, on the way to uh, the hotel. That was the only thing that he had to arrange and he <laughs> wanted to surprise me. Yeah. And he got lost. And we, he could see the hotel, but he didn't want me to know where it was. Yeah. Yes. And we drove for three hours trying <laughs> to get into this, trying to find the entry for this hotel and had the biggest argument of our marriage the night we got married. Well, were... And I said, just let me know. Tell me what it is and I'll yeah. let you know how to get there. And then I realized before we even got to the wedding night hotel, oh, what have I done? Oh. Not just that, because he's, he's telling her he's telling the accommodation is a surprise. And for all she knew, the surprise was it was the car. <laughs> they were going to drive around all night. Oh, oh that's a tough Raylene. two and a half Raylene. years, Raylene. There are people on Married at First Sight who stick it out longer than you. <laughs> Raylene. Oh, no, I'm proud of you. Amazing, so Rails. Thank you. Uh, Bindi's in Google Up. Hello. Good morning. Hi, Hi Bindi. Hey, Bindi. When did you realise you'd made a terrible mistake? Well, me and my newly married husband, we went over to Mauritius where he's from. So I was meeting the family for the first time and there was a pilgrimage happening. Yeah. And and he said, would you like to, you know, would you like to walk a pilgrimage? And I said, yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I made a bit of a hike, <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't have any idea what a pilgrimage was, but I was like, you know, do it for the family, first impressions, you know. Yes, sure. <laughs> so anyway, had to, like, we had to wear white. And I put on lovely sandals and I thought, okay, oh, no. that's nice. Sandals. So nobody at any point said, wear comfortable shoes. <laughs> 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 so anyway, we started, We first we got stuck in traffic for four hours and then we started walking and then about an hour into it, I was still excited, but I was like, oh, my feet's starting to get sore. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, still walking and I said to my husband's uncle, I was like, oh, so you know, how much longer have we got? And he goes, oh, Bindi, just count six trees and then you'll know. And so, you know, just walking along, okay, pass number one, got to six, and then I'm sure another 600. And I said, okay, this is serious now. Where are we? How far have we got? Like, my feet are about to fall off. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we ended up walking for nine hours. <laughs> and I couldn't I couldn't get out of it because it was like a big religious, you know, yeah. like everyone in the religious was doing it. And it was first impressions for the family. And plus, I'd already walked that far. There was no way to get back out again. Yes. So I just had to walk. And I sh- I'm sure, like, the next day I had the biggest blisters on the bottom of my feet. Oh, And I hours. said, oh. It, it was crazy. It was nine hours of walking in sandals. Like, Can I just insane. say something on your defence, Bindi, right? Yeah. Everyone else telling yeah. you to wear bloody comfortable shoes. Yes. I'm pretty sure when this pilgrimage first originally happened, it was sandals. So I think yeah. that you are the <laughs> only person that did it properly. Authentically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did yeah, you have any sort of nine hours. religious epiphany at the end of it? <laughs> um, No, just. Um, I just thought I might invest in better shoes for next yeah, sure. time. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, so. that's an epiphany of sorts. God, isn't imagine it? it. Imagine on the fifth hour, oh. then the sixth hour, oh. and then the seventh oh, hour. <laughs> you would know my feelings. Oh, amazing. Thanks, Bindi. You're listening to Nathan, Nat, and Sean. On Channel 10, a new show debuts. It's called Would I Lie to You and the Host. And also, most importantly, cover girl of this month's Women's Week. Yeah, oh, hello. None other Good than honor. Chrissy Swan. <laughs> what in Chrissy? Yeah, hello. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> what about you, those photos, huh? You are looking great, mate. Bloody glamorous. You look great. Yeah, there's, like, there's certain, there's certain honours in Australia yes. that you can get. That's one of them. I remember oh, the thrill I got when I was a question on the That's Life crossword puzzle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've arrived. <laughs> You've absolutely arrived. No, it was really amazing, but I do want to say that's not my house. They're not no. my clothes. <laughs> oh, so you're, like, so you're like a married at first sight contestant, yes. are you? Could be, no, I'm like a real housewife of Melbourne. <laughs> you know how oh, they, that's right. they purport to have this incredibly lavish lifestyle and it's just a rental. One of them is, I've got this like penthouse apartment and she lives in just like a normal bloody house in the suburb where the lawn yeah. wasn't mowed or anything. Yeah, it was that's, a, that's essentially me on the on the cover of uh, Women's Weekly. Not my house, not my clothes, but what a lovely, what a lovely adventure. 
picture that So it's all a lie, essentially, which leads very nicely into would I lie to you? (laughs) Very true, Nat. Well done. Are you excited about this show? Are you going to watch it or is it too late for you guys? Well, it's got the stable stars on, so we like a lot of people that are on your show as well. And I'm on board with this show. I love the English version. So great. And so very happy to see an Australian version. It is a it's a fantastic format, and I think we learnt that pretty soon into filming that it's unstuff upable. Yeah. I I used a different word yeah. when I, uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, it's sort of I was like, oh okay, you can't muck this up. It's just a really great game to play. Um, it felt like you know a really good Christmas day, a little bit tipsy, very <laughs> full. And you know the family start telling tall yeah. stories, yeah, and yeah. it's um it's gorgeous. And t- on tonight's show is of course Ross Noble, yeah, He's yeah, fabulous. He's awesome. Carrie Bickmore, Luke McGregor, and Zoe Coombs Ma. So it's a fantastic lineup, and it's just really fun. The secret for lying is because people go, "Do you go stuck into the yes. details? Mm-hmm. Do you got not give many details?" The, mm. It's the simple thing about lying is. You believe it. Oh, it's George Costanza. <laughs> you just need to believe what you're saying. Exactly what George and said. And just stand strong. Mm. That's it. That is very true, Nathan, and that's, that's what it. the um, that's what the producers told all the guests. Oh, right. Yeah, they just said whatever you're saying, yep. commit to commit it. Commit to it. <laughs> yeah, it's like you, yeah. it's like if you're going to steal something, um, you just act like it's yours and take it. <laughs> And then people yeah, won't think yeah. anything of it. We've I seen... remember there, I, there was a shopping centre here in Perth. I'm not sure if it was Karen up years ago, but you know those um, the lounges, the communal lounges in yes, the middle? Yes, people just walked so in. So two guys just got, had overalls on. They walked in, they took the lounge, and then everyone yeah. from the centre thought, oh, they work for us because mm. they did it so confidently, and that's they took it true. on. That's true. And if you can pretend mm. that, yes. I mean, that's the key, because I've stolen a slab of 30 Diet Cokes by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Just slip yes, into the yes. pocket. <laughs> because I did believe that, you know, they'd already been scanned. They were in the bottom of the of the trolley. <laughs> and I just assumed that, oh, you know, I've obviously paid for these. And it wasn't until later I realised that I'd stolen them. And the reason I could get away with it was because I was very confident leaving the <laughs> Okay. Did Chrissy. you go back? Did you go back? Yes, I did okay. go back. I yeah. did. Yeah. I you did. know why? Because there's, there's a Daily gonna... Mail article waiting there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Chrissy, it actually right. happened to me because I was at Coles. Uh, it wasn't too long ago, actually, and I did my shopping. And then I just walked off casually because I believed I'd paid. I'd taken all my stuff. And I went over to, like, Brumby's or something, you yeah. know, to get some bread. And then yeah. uh, an employee came over and said, could you come back to the store? And I was thinking, honestly, it was in my mind thinking, oh, someone wants a photo or something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what I thought. What a I show of his paid. asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> 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 oh, exactly. Oh, my God. Uh, what's um, the, what's is it a good to- It must be a good feeling at the moment because we're just starting. You're our first interview today. First yes. thing we're getting cracking, and you're done. Yes. You're done and dusted. Yes, I am. But I've got a big day of publicity. I'm going to be on the project tonight. So, like, if you don't like my work, stay <laughs> off Channel Ten. <laughs> stay night. Night. day yeah, yeah. because I'm everywhere. Um, but yeah, no, look, it's good. It's good. I'm going to go for my walk and. Uh, do some other boring things, yep. and um, and then I'm I'm gonna get my hairs did and <laughs> lots of makeup on for the project tonight. Um, I do love it. Chrissy right now is in a production booth um, in the Melbourne studios, yes. and in the background there's a old publicity um, uh, poster for Kate, Tim, and Marty upside down in the corner, um, <laughs> which goes very nicely with our American Rosso one. <laughs> <laughs> Memory. Don't worry, eventually it'll be our names That's on the right. yes. <laughs> posters. You're story. hilarious. It's like, as if they're going to keep those posters around, they'll burn them. <laughs> Everyone gets a turn. Everyone gets a turn. Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. Okay, this is probably one of the worst things to happen on the toilet, I'm guessing. <laughs> um, a girl named Tegan, she's a 21-year-old university student, so she has been having a long-distance relationship with her partner. Okay. Yes. And um, she rang him one day and said, you know what, I think I might be pregnant or I'm getting fat. 
and then Could he goes, go either way. and then she went, okay. So then she started tracking it back, and she goes, okay, well, if I'm pregnant, she goes, it, it, it would be no longer than three months. Because that was thought. the last okay. time she saw him. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and she was thinking, so I might be three months pregnant. Took a pregnancy test, rang a partner, and said, it's saying that I'm pregnant. And he oh. goes, well, you know what? You, obviously, it's three months. Or she thought it was three months, or it would be yes. like six weeks. Yep. So, and and he goes, he goes, well, we've got some time to like work everything out. Yeah. And, and tell the family because they're in a long term, a long distance relationship. But yep. it would be better if they're on in the yep. same place. Yep. So I would for think so. a week, she didn't really do anything. She's no. got her head together about the time. fact that I'm, you know, better, you know, tell the family soon and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, one morning, she uh, a week later on, after speaking to her boyfriend and finding out that she was pregnant, went to go to the toilet because she said she had an upset stomach. Yeah. And then she looked down and realised that she wasn't doing a number two, she was doing a number three, which is having a baby. <laughs> oh, <laughs> premature. Okay, this is frightening. Not premature. No, not premature. She didn't nine realize months how she'd pregnant been she pregnant. Was. She'd oh. been pregnant for nine months. And not realised. Are she you thought, joking? Yeah, it yes, happens, it happens. Sean, it I happens. actually have read it happen, but I, it I'm happens. just starting it. Are you joking? Yeah, Sean, yeah, it happens. So anyway, so here she is and, you know, crowning on the toilet and she was like, oh, my God, so she's in a share house. Right. So then she just starts frantically calling each one of her housemates who are in the, in the house. In the building, yeah. At the same time. It's 7 a.m. in the morning. And she said all she could hear is their phones from each room ringing and not one Did of them. Did she consider, I don't know, answer. yelling? Yelling I think out. she was yelling. Because you'd think that yelling was, would be more yeah, effective She than was calling. yelling, but she was like, she, then her, her other resort was to call one of them because they were That'll all wake home. Up. So phone, then next phone. Then next phone. She's another round. Next phone. Next phone. Next phone. No one. Try ringing. yelling. Answer your phone. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then she gave birth on the toilet. Oh no! So then imagine her housemates would have gone, "Go, why would you call us?" And then she's holding a baby. <laughs> no, 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 was oh, no reason. <laughs> that is, yeah, that's next level. How? But there's the baby now. It's an interview with the baby. Toilet baby. How how frustrating. How frustrating for when you really need to speak to someone yes. and they will not answer. And even worse, that you know that they're that you there. Can, yes, you know they're the there system. and you can hear the phone yeah. ringing. Yeah. Yeah, and you were saying this morning, Sean, um, that, that when you're out in public and someone is calling you, which is what you do with your wife. All the time. What happens? Hopefully she's asleep. Um, well, you got to pick up your phone and then pretend that you're answering it. And, pretend and, that you and just and missed it. Just missed it. Oh, oh, just, just in case it. they're looking at you from over the road. Because that can happen. Because <laughs> yeah. you can never know. Or just like, that's the best thing about an Apple Watch or like a Fitbit that's connected to your phone. You can just sort of do a glance at your wrist. But if you pull your phone out and then go, oh, no, nah, and put it back in your pocket and someone sees that. Oh, oh yeah, you're gone big time. This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. We are talking about when they wouldn't answer. Inspired by Tegan, the girl who gave birth on her home toilet. Um, she didn't know that she was fully pregnant. She yep. thought she was only a few months in. Yep. And uh, her housemates all home tried to call, yelled out, no response. Tried to call them all. Could hear the phone ringing in each respective yep. room. Nobody answering. Oh, Nobody answering. In a time of need. When they woke up, they had an extra housemate. It was unbelievable. <laughs> yes. Amy's in Golden Bay. Hi, Amy. Hello. I feel like my husband is going to murder you because last week I spoke to you because his bits were hanging out of his shorts. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Amy. We're just I, hitting on the I right never, notes. I never get on the radio and now I'm getting on twice with him being... <laughs> well, <laughs> great. Well, you know what? It's a party. Let's go. Let's go. What, what did you do this time? <laughs> well, he never he never answers like unknown numbers because he always thinks it's going to be someone telling me I've paid a bill or done yes. something. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, me too. Yeah. So anyway, I'd gone for a run with my two dogs and I hadn't taken my phone and I tripped over the dog and <laughs> it turned out I had fractured my ankle. Oh, um, oh. Anyway, and this lovely old man came to my rescue and said, look, I'll, I'll ring you. Have I got, have you got someone I can call? And I was like, yeah, you can ring my partner, you know. Anyway, I knew he was laying on the couch because that is that was where I had left him. So, <laughs> and he had his phone, probably playing Candy Crush or something. Anyway, yeah. um, and of course he didn't pick up. So this poor man rang him like seven times. He said, look, it's... <laughs> It's okay. I'll I'll I'll, just, I'll drive you home. So he had like this little Hyundai Getz or something. He had to put my two dogs and myself like crying, couldn't walk into the back of his car yes. and drive me home to my husband, who was yes laying on the couch still doing nothing. And yeah. I ended up in a moon boot for six weeks, and I felt like I had to repay this poor man, like that had yes. actually driven my slobbery dog home and me. So yeah. Oh, Amy. 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 I. 
am just falling in love with your husband yes. every time we no. speak. Um, do, he, do you he will feel, be, hor- be horrified. Do you feel brave enough to just say his first name? What is his first name? Do we do we get to oh, know? Oh no, I can't. Oh, Amy, go his on. Name's Dan. 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 Yeah, Dan. Dan. I love a good Dan in my life. Dan. Yeah. Dan. Dan, and Dan of Golden and Bay. Amy of Golden Bay. <laughs> and, actually, and I'm actually painting an absolutely terrible picture of him because he's just very good. Oh uh, no, 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 we no. know he's great, and mm. apparently high scores on Candy Crush. Yes. <laughs> Some, somehow, something tells me that whole situation could have been fixed with a text message. Would a text message have done yeah, the trick? Yeah, that's a good call. No, no, no. Old man, can't old people it. can't send text messages. <laughs> like, seriously, my mum's, whenever my mum sends a text message, it's broken English. It's like she doesn't know. <laughs> grammar goes out of the window. She doesn't know what a comma is. Can't find them. <laughs> he could have just written Amy broken. That would have been yeah, enough. Amy, right. ankle, oh. owl. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. You can call us anytime. Uh, give our love to Dan. Lynn's in Woodvale. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Really, really good, Lynn. What happened? When wouldn't, wouldn't someone answer? Um, well, I'd been, I was pregnant with my second child. I, I did know I was pregnant, though, luckily. Yeah. Um, and then I'd been quite sick um, and in hospital. And um, then at, when I was at home, I went into premature labour and I phoned my husband and he didn't answer. I phoned my mother-in-law, she didn't answer. I phoned my mother, she didn't answer. <laughs> Eventually phoned the ambulance um, and then delivered in the bathroom with the assistance of my three-year-old, because nobody answered the phone. Oh, <laughs> Lynn! And how much assistance was the three-year-old exactly, Lynn? Well, she got towels and she was very oh. excited because her sister was coming and, you know, so it, it probably took a bit of the stress off of thinking about what yeah. was actually happening. Yeah, I mean, look, granted, it was it was a bit more traumatic than getting a doll from the shops. Yes, exactly. It's not <laughs> yeah. exactly a baby born, is it? How, Lynn, how full on was it for you? Like, at the time, I mean, obviously, you're, you're getting help, help in that way, but... How did you try to keep calm? I think that I, I was actually quite sick. I'd been in hospital with measles. So I think I was actually too sick to realise how what was happening. I was just just so, um, you know, happy when she came out that she was all right. And yep. She was crying and yep. she was, you know, she was tiny. So I was. I think I was just so happy that she was fine. Yeah, and what about wow. what, what about the reaction of all the people that you tried to call who didn't answer? What? <laughs> yeah. how, how did they make it up to you? <laughs> um, well, my husband arrived with the ambulance um, and um, so he got a bit of a shock, <laughs> obviously, when he came home. <laughs> yes. But um, I must say, when I got back from the hospital, you know, he was very nice and supportive. <laughs> so he should be. You would feel so <laughs> guilty for not answering. I, you not would, I know. You would straight away have to think of the most elaborate, important lie of what yes. you were doing because <laughs> just not answering because you're watching Netflix or something wouldn't have flown. No, that's not going to fly. Thanks, Lynn. Chanel's in Mandra. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello, Good Chanel. Chanel. Okay, what happened? Oh, wow. Well, it's actually a sad story, but <laughs> I call, I tried to call my husband um, around 11 to tell him my granddad passed away and he just decided to call me back at night. What? So you've called at 11 yeah. o'clock in the morning and he hasn't yeah. responded at all until <laughs> that night? Yeah. Oh, well, he was busy as a supervisor, but yeah. Like but he still has a smoker. lunch break and a smoko, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Did you, how many messages did you leave, Chanel, or did you text him as well? Oh, a few. <laughs> wow, I'm I just trying to get, times, I'm just trying boring. to get into his mindset. I'm mm. just thinking, okay, so there's no further, like, you can't die anymore. You know what I mean? So, like, maybe that's what he was thinking. But yeah, then you, it's, I can't not, do about, it's not about the death, it's no, about it's the supporting the, of the partner. The grieving partner, that's right. <laughs> Are you still married, Chanel? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what? Oh, so he's got other She's... positives, <laughs> I fine, imagine. So. <laughs> it's fine. Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. So, Ali, the borders come down on Thursday, um, Thursday. Uh, Thursday and all the people that have been wanting to come over for ages are fleeing over here. I think mm-hmm. they said for sale there's 7,800 properties for sale for 40,000 people that are yes. coming in and there's probably about 1,000 rentals up for grabs. How are you going with your rental situation? Uh, no, I haven't found one as yet. Unbelievable. Um, and now are it's you about frightened? To get but you're not stressing, are you? I'm trying not to stress. You can just live with die. Your mum? Yeah, but um, 
I shouldn't have to. That's the thing. You shouldn't. It's the lowest vacancy rate pretty much ever, yes. 0.8%. Yeah. And you go and you offer, um, you go to a house worth 600 and it ends it's up getting auction. rented out for 660 a week. Yeah. I mean, I've just found out that in Victoria, for example, I don't know about other states, but definitely in Victoria, that's illegal. It Ooh, should be it illegal. It's advertised illegal for $600. They have to rent that it at $600. should be illegal. They're, you can't have a bidding war. You essentially will not get a property unless you're willing to off- yes. offer up to $40, $50 over. Yeah. That's at really least, interesting. Yeah. When I, a real estate agent I spoke to, they were talking to me about a rental I've got in Secret Harbour, and they were saying, fairly, this this is where the price needs to be. And they just said it for me. They just said, this has got to be fair. It can't be It doesn't matter. The they, but you, and other, you, other people are not. They're well, just going to hire it's up to the owners. Thing. You could, as so. the owner, accept the yeah. price. Yes. But yeah, yeah, but then like with anyone else, you know, who's going to say no to uh, more uh, money. Uh, someone saying, oh, someone's yeah. bidding more money, most people go, yeah, okay, more money is good. Yeah. I mean, if you're weighing up applications and if you've got 40 of them, you're going to take the one yeah. that, if they're yeah, yeah, solid yeah. tenants, you're going to yeah. take the yeah. one that's more. It. Anyway, Sean's just um, established the fact that that Secret Harbour one, um, your, your application has <laughs> been denied. <laughs> Raise the number. God damn it. <laughs> the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. I did something on Saturday that made me feel very, very uncomfortable, Sean, but I did it and I had you in did mind. Did you swim to Rotnest? <laughs> I slept with a woman. No. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you go there, though? But you thought of Sean, so that's nice. <laughs> <It was. laughs> no, I complained. How much did you scrub oh. yourself afterwards? Yeah. What? Sorry? <laughs> like I just come out of a nuclear power plant. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> People came with brooms. <laughs> um, like Chernobyl. Um, yeah, no, Where? I complained. What, you went out for lunch and you complained? No, no, no. So I um, was going to my hairdressers, mm-hmm. and then what I do is I always pick up um, uh, breakfast or lunch for everybody yep. that works yep. there. So I had um, rocked up to this establishment that I frequent. I don't want to say where it is. And I can't even say what I bought because I'll give it away. Um, anyway, but the thing had bacon and egg in it. Right. Like a breakfast food. Yep, yep. So, um, <laughs> yes. I've got to be very I careful. wonder what it could possibly be. <laughs> that's, that's the thing that I got. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so you know yep, where I was going. Yep. Um, anyway, so the thing got bacon and egg in it. So then when I got there to dish them out to everyone, had no bloody egg in it. No, like one of the like there's two ingredients. Bacon, bacon, bacon sandwiches for and everyone. And there's just bacon and that's it. And this thing needs egg. So I was just sitting there going, This is insane. So I ended up um calling them and leaving a message and oh the shame. You the left shame. So you complained but not to their faces. No, well I tried to complain to their faces. But no one answered. But no one answered. So then there was a recording. So I left a message and I gave my whole name. Oh hi, this is Nathan Morris and just the shame of doing that and then realising what you're about to say is so daunting. And I went did oh. then Did you then just scream, where's my egg? <laughs> <laughs> I ordered six of these things and they didn't come with egg. And I said, actually, to be honest, two of them came with egg and it would have been like a teaspoon of egg. The rest of them just had no egg. So they decided to put in not much egg in, any, in two of them and none, no egg in the rest of them. Anyway, there is so, an egg shortage, Nathan. So Did then, you get it? Yeah. So then I, um, so then I was like, okay, what, what's happening? I was waiting for a message back and um, no one called me. So then I thought, you know what, I'm going to get on the um, online service in which I ordered it from. And then I complained through there. Anyway, they, they rang me back in the afternoon. Mm. And um, they're giving me credit. My name's at the counter, and um, they're giving me. I have to go in there and say my name. What happened? And then they're gonna. <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> not, well, that's never gonna happen. Yeah, what is that? So, do you want Sean yeah, to go yeah, in yeah, for yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> 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 oh, just wait so me. Yeah, I'm gonna claim it all. That. Harry, I'm not gonna complain about no egg when it's when it's on the answering machine and you're emailing. Oh my god! Oh, what a loser. They know how to get me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, your name's on the counter, Nathan. Oh, oh, oh. There's a big picture of you no, when you're in there. No. <laughs> Give this man some eggs. The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Bit of a, around the grounds to uh, kick things off. The West Coast Fever went down to the Melbourne Vixens in a final of, I think it was called the Ladies' Cup, which was a netball pre-season competition. Yeah. Yep. And the NBL did it last couple of years, the NBL Blitz. They just get all the teams in the one spot, yep. being able to play each it's other. Like a lightning carnival. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. We've all been a part of them. <laughs> yep. So they're really good fun. And it looks like the West Coast Fever will have another terrific season this year. So good luck to the girls going forward. They look like they're on the right path yet again. Our Perth Wildcats are back in action tonight. They're playing the Jack Jumpers. Mm-hmm. The Tasmanian Jack Jumpers. No, mm-hmm. Mitch Norton, he got poked in the eye. Yeah, he oh, did. And the, on Saturdays. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened so many times, Sean. Sure. Yeah, it has. Oh, my God. <laughs> Memories. Uh, <laughs> he won't be playing. He's yeah. been ruled out of this game in their loss the other day. I'm They've still... kind of hit of a bit of a flat spot. Yeah, the, uh, West, uh, sorry, 
the um, Wildcats at the moment. They just need to get home, still I reckon. not on board with Jack Jumpers as the name. Me neither. I don't even see it, it growing on me. It doesn't feel right. So you said it. I think it's because it's a term we're not familiar with because yeah. it's, a, it's like it's an insect that we don't have here. And so we're like, oh, what, what is that? But yeah. to them, And it feels like they've, they've gotten jumping jacks they're, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're little stingy ants. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yesterday in the AFLW, West Coast were absolutely smashed. Ooh. 74 points. Brisbane kicked 15 goals which is the most that's ever been yeah, kicked in the school. AFLW uh, game. So they have got a lot of work to do. And if you're a West Coast Eagles supporter of the men's team, they are <sighs> in for a long a horror year. horror run. They've had horror a horrendous run. run, Nat. Dom Sheed looks like he's got syndesmosis require, yep. will require surgery, yep. surgery. Campbell Chess is their young gun, number 14 pick in this year's draft or last year's draft. He's badly hurt his ankle three to four months this year. Do you know what now. really stings? Jared Brander kicked five goals. For the Giants on the weekend in their scratch match. So they let him go. And, uh, yeah, we could probably do with him this year by the looks of it with yeah. no Jack Darling. It's going to be a really, really tough start yeah, for the West Coast Eagles having so many players unavailable yep. and out. Um, mm. It could be quite disastrous, yeah. to be fair. But in breaking football news, mm -hmm. um, Fifey shaved his goatee off. It made the news everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. So with, you know what? I, I just sometimes think the people in the Ukraine... <laughs> I if they jumped what? onto Perth now, exactly. dot au, and saw that as one of the leading stories, I think you'd just be going, "What?" Like, mm. Yeah, I know, but, but he's no, he that does look, look a lot talk better the without the guy. Yeah, I reckon too, Fifey. Yeah, I reckon it's I, good to yeah, be off. I didn't. I wasn't on board so with that at all. Move. Um, yeah, so I think that yeah, I think that was the right move. Well, for Fremantle both professionally and for your marketability. Well, Fremantle will have Nat Five this weekend against the West Coast Eagles. I did. I mean, the, well, the West Frio Coast probably would win by seven a mile anyway. To play. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They uh, Frio had a good lineup up on the other night, and they yeah. won easily. They'll win it easily again, I'd imagine, on Saturday as well. And uh, their season seems to be going okay. And um, finally. I said, and we've spoke about it um, a fair bit over the last couple of days, um, doing the Rotnest Swim, which I did. Yes. But if you're keen to do that, the Port to Pub registration is closed tomorrow, team. Oh, so if you're like, oh, we missed out on Rotnest. Yes. But, and we've got two more friends who want to swim with us because it's teams of six, yeah? You can do teams of four and teams of six. Or so you can do it solo. No, do the 25K in race. Do you want to do it, years. Nathan? <laughs> Natalie, how many, how many people in a team? So spread your arm length out, right? So how many, if, if we need that many people, because I'll, I'll swim in arm's length. Yes. Okay. <laughs> how big is that team to get us over there? <laughs> well, it's 20K, so. Yeah. So quite a few. That's 20K's a worth of people. Mm. <laughs> me a human chain. And you'll be in the shallow end. end. Yeah, that's you'll right. Be in the I'll be in the shallow end. Nathan's just a, the, 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 yeah. the final stretch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, three, yeah. The glory. Literally glory. three doggy paddles. Doggy, <laughs> doggy, doggy paddle, I'm out. That's yeah. what I'm going to be. Well, if you're interested in uh, getting Nathan into your team to do that, or perhaps you're going to register your own team, Team. Registration's <laughs> close tomorrow. Port to Pub's a good race. Nathan, Dad and Sean. Time to talk to the main man. Mark McGowan joins us. Good morning, Premier. Morning, Premier. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Fantastic. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, right off the bat, Mark McGowan, thank you so much for being us being the only state that gets free rat tests. For everyone, yeah. I mean, Natalie and I are looking forward to our five tests. Per um, person. Per person. Sean has got a problem, though. Oh, I've got a household of six people. <laughs> so, and I'm just wondering who's going to pay for the uh, extra one. Extra twelve dollars. Mark McGowan. Mark. Well, uh, you know, you you're, you're you're the architect of your situation. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Oh, how could I say no? <laughs> I say no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know. Russian roulette, Sean. <laughs> 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 one must go. <laughs> So to get there, Mark, are they going to be – do you have to go through a COVID clinic? Is this you have what to I was register. watching you at? You have yeah. to register, then go so and pick them up. So there's three ways. Yeah. There's three ways. You can go to the airport and get them. You can register online or you can call the one free COVID number and provide your details. So there's three ways to get them. Or, uh, so or the initial, COVID eats. Yeah. COVID eats, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah that's it. But the initial distribution will be a pack of five per household just so people have got some in stock. But as we get more to hand, we'll distribute more. So okay. they're just a tool to use so that you can, if you feel off or you yes. worried you might have been somewhere, you can test and you can know whether or not you should go to work or go out. Sure. Hey, Mark, a question about that, and this is just you know nothing to do with anything really, but every box that I've seen of um, a, a COVID pack of five, the box says six. Is there, Are you only allowed to sell five at a time? What's the deal with that? Do you know? I have never heard of that before. Yeah. That is... So, uh, have you ever heard? Of, they're always in packs of five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the boxes say 
six packs on that, and there's a space for another pack in there. I, really? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, well, I, I didn't know that. I'll follow that. I'll get a crack team of people working on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, think you, might be, I think you might be busy. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you keep doing what you're doing. Hey, Mark, there's a few things going around in the news at the moment, but I did mm. hear um, one the other day, um, uh, actually, Clay Gollidge, the infectious disease expert, he was really not happy about the... Um, Elective surgery get, getting put off, and given the fact that there's low numbers, obviously there's only a couple, uh, you know, low hospitalisation. Yeah, and yeah. there's no one in ICU. Has that? Did you jump the gun a bit early, mate? Uh, well, you could argue that, but the, the, you know, we act on the basis of advice and modelling. So the modelling sort of indicates at a certain point in time there'll be lots of people in hospital. So what we did was we didn't book surgery for those days or for that period, but. When, as the date gets closer and there's not those people in hospital COVID, well, then we book the surgery. So no one really misses out um, by doing that. It's just that we are, we know we've got spots available should we need them. And if um, we don't get the COVID cases, then we book in surgery at a later date. Now, in not, does that make sense, Sean? Do you have no, no, I'm, I'm just thinking, so what do you mean by a later date? So, so... The theatres so, could be running until a yes. point. What he's saying is none of no one's appointments were cancelled. So if you had an appointment, that was fine, but no new appointments were made. Yeah, is that, is that true? Yeah, no new. No, so yeah, that that Natalie's correct, except to say that there, there was a date in which we were going to stop surgery. But as that date got closer and we didn't have COVID cases, mm. we booked surgery for those days. Yeah. Okay, okay. so it can continue. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Now, in non-COVID-related news, um, it came out yesterday, Premier, that the much-lauded film studio in Fremantle <laughs> project has been shelved. Now, what's Kate Walsh going to say about this? I know. We're looking forward to a free Mollywood. <laughs> well, that, that's not entirely true. So what we're doing is we're just looking at alternative sites. So we remain very strongly committed to the project. It's just finding an alternative site is what we're trying to do because the Fremantle side has a bunch of problems we weren't aware of. So I don't know what Kate's going to do. I'm sure, I'm, I think Kate will just be happy, as will the um, sort of, you know, the, the acting um, film industry in WA, if we're able to get studios up and running where, yeah. wherever they are. I do feel like it would be very beneficial to have it near water, just so we can get more of the water-based films. <laughs> oh, um, Waterworld and, was a great like hit. Waterworld. Remember that um, one? You know, maybe Yours. if... Jaws. Jaws. Yeah. Should always be, it's pretty easy to film in Perth. <laughs> Bit of a reality. If you're not filming it in Esperance, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that should be put into the mix, mm. Sean. Yeah, I, that's that's really good thinking. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah I, what, are the, what are some of the other water-based movies that are out there? Battleship, oh, remember God. that one? Yeah, yeah. Baywatch, yeah, Baywatch, Baywatch is, is like just begging to be revived. Baywatch. So we're looking at, it's not about mm. movies anymore, though. It's about TV well, beaches, series. Yeah, TV <laughs> series work, Netflix <laughs> stuff. Beaches. A bunch of fun for the whole family. <laughs> that was. Yeah, try not to cry watching beaches. That's very difficult. Oh, it's impossible. That last bit mm. on the on the Bet banana Midler really gets you. Yeah. Oh my god, the saddest thing that's ever happened on a banana lounge. You're listening to Nathan, Nat, and Sean. Hey, Mark. As we know, um, you got a date with Destiny um, with the courts coming up this week. Oh, um, the quarantine situation. Why do you need to appease a small bunch? I would think a minority group by coming back and doing quarantine when it's not there? When you don't need to. Well, look, I, I promised I would. But, but, uh, but the why? Was up. You know what I mean? Because people would have criticised him right away, Sean. He's silly. He's 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 the Premier of WA he does, and the borders are open, he so can, you, he can you deal with the situation. He can run the state from a hotel room. Yeah. But I, uh, it, be, yeah. Why did I do it? Because everyone else was, and I didn't want anyone to be able to say that I manipulated the state to suit myself. Because there are people out there who sort of allege those sorts of things, and I you know, I didn't want any any... Any suggestion of that, but it doesn't matter. You know, I'll I'll go in there. I'll you know I'll work. I'll Zoom. I'll phone call. I'll yeah. they'll drop off work for me. That, that's fine. It's just I won't be in my office or I won't be out at community events for a week. That's all. Yeah. Now, when you heard that um, Clive was experiencing COVID-like symptoms, oh god, it's retirement. Are you like? Are you, were you like? Oh, thank God, he got my package. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? Yeah, be careful. I don't. You have I this don't monitored. Wish, I don't wish. I don't wish Ill, Ill will on anyone. But you what don't. I was concerned about was that he needed two ambulances. I didn't quite get that. <laughs> no, but I already needed three ambulances. Well, his wife. One was for his wife. So one was for him. One was for his wife. I don't know what the third. No, one was for. no. One was for him. One was for his wife. The other was for his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, I believe that COVID is hit close to you because one of your very close advisors is, is suffering, yeah? Yep. Yeah, my chief of staff, uh, who runs my office, he's uh, he's 
uh, positive, so he was positive on Friday. So I've had three rat tests since then, just yes. to confirm that I'm that I'm okay, and I am. How's he um, feeling? Is he feeling okay? He said he felt really rough. Yeah, he said it was really he was really rough there on Friday night and perhaps Saturday. Uh, I, he's three dose vaccinated, but he said he he, he was you know the hot cold thing and working yeah. up all night. Yeah, all that sort of stuff. Sounds like a big mm, night hey. out. I think we've all yeah. been part of that. <laughs> you know nah, what I mean? That was Sean after the Rotto swim. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mark, who do you think out of us three will get COVID first? Uh, well, I think it would be more likely to be you, Nathan, because you go to nightclubs. No, yeah, no, he's no, a man no, nightclub. What? what can, Is that the big house to six in the morning? What image it's do you have painted of me? <laughs> what, what nightclubs do you think I'm going to? I <laughs> oh, don't name no, them, Mark. I just have images of you dry rating the night away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's on you, mate. That's, yeah, just for your own personal pleasure. I think, you know, you know Mark, be Sean. mosquitoes be don't... Sean. Nathan never gets bitten by mosquitoes, yes. so he's got no chance of getting COVID in my eyes. It'll be me, and I don't care. I'll bring it on. Mosquitoes and malaria, but in any in any yeah, but small it. detail. Mm, yeah. But um, he uh, but he goes to the nightclubs and he hangs out. He's he does. He does. Sort of character. That's true. Well, you're he's tucked that, up in he's bed. That you know, character. Yeah, I've just tucked up with the kids because I'm a <laughs> father. Sneaking into magnet. Oh, you know why? Like, like, sure. I always see Mark on the other podium across the club, there in his little hot pants. Holding on to a glow stick. <laughs> That's how we know. I, 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 don't, I deny that. I deny that viciously. No one's got any evidence. Okay, <laughs> then check out my Insta a little bit. Hey, Mark, today. one more serious one from me. We were having a discussion, I think it was the end of last week. So around the world and certainly in time, because we're all vaccinated, us in particular, but, you know, us I'm by West Australians yeah, in yeah. terms of levels. Nine, what, 98 odd percent? Yeah. yeah, but there are people who we all run into who are not getting vaccinated and they choose to do that. How long do you reckon, because we've seen you on the news before and you're making statements, it's going to be a couple of years, at least a couple of years for, for these to stay down. Like Nathan, I, I think it was me and you having a discussion, yeah, Nathan. Yeah. Well, well, we can't see it yeah, going that long. Yeah. Well, no, my thing was, Mark, I was um, seeing the fact that, that people can now go into a liquor store because you've dropped that sort of requirement of mm. having to be... Um, that was a tough uh, one. Yes. Like, yeah. like Vax. And then I was well, looking at, thinking about people like, say, Jack Darling or, or people that um, don't want to get it done. And then there's those people that end up caving and getting... Um, vaccinated, which I think everyone should be vaccinated. And you were saying that the mandates were going to be around for years and years and years to come. That's true. Yep. Is it going to be a scenario where that's not the case? Because I'm thinking those people will yes. be so enraged by the fact that they just didn't wait it out when the threat was for years and years to come. What's the deal? Because it feels like you're starting to take your pedal off the metal. <laughs> so we're, we got 99% uh, first dose, we've got about 97% double dose. Yeah. And third dose, we're at about 63%. So we have to continue to get the third dose yes. rate up. Yep. Otherwise, because yep. we know with this strain, all the evidence is that people will get sick. And you've got to also remember there might be further strains and the like. So we've got to keep people vaccinated and make sure that we get that third dose rate up. So vax, uh, the, the, the proof of vaccination requirements, obviously they change over time. Yeah. Um, and we change one, the bottle shop thing. Uh, other states have changed them for various venues and the like. So that's under constant monitoring. But getting people vaccinated has been an important part of how well we've done. We currently only have about a dozen people in hospital, and that's because we have such yeah. high vaccination levels. The other states, you know, they've had thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people in the hospital and thousands of people die. We've had two people in Western Australia acquire the virus here and die. So mm. doing all these things has actually worked. And whilst it, you know, some people haven't liked it um, overwhelmingly, the people who haven't liked it have actually gone and got vaccinated and they've probably moved on. Yeah. Oh, I don't I honestly don't think they would. I think that they would be really resentful if yeah. the threat was for years and then, say, in six months' time, all of that got dropped and then they got vaccinated and they didn't want to. Even though I think that everyone should personally. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I just agree. Thinking yeah. I don't that. think there's a it's massive the last, number mate. of those. There are some, no, but I don't think well, it's a well, massive number. Well, there's still percentage. people, yeah. you yeah, know yeah, what I mean, yeah, and they yeah. feel like they're being manipulated into getting it through Well, we have, but we've done it for... The, the greater the good. good. We've done it for the community. Um, yeah. Premier, the, we saw reports from the UK that they're about to drop the um, uh, requirement to isolate when you test positive. So they're basically now just going back to normal life. How far away are we from that happening, do you reckon? Uh, we'd be a long way from that. But you've got to remember they've had hundreds of thousands of people die yeah, in that no. dislocation. Um, so their experience has been very different to us. If we can keep... Uh, our current trajectory with vaccination and hospitalisation, um, you know, will come out of this really well and hopefully restrictions will only be in place for a, 
a relatively short period of time. But I can't foresee a situation where someone who is positive uh, and knows they're positive would then just blithely go to work or what have you. That, that they should yeah. stay home and they should make sure they're not spreading it. But you yeah, should do that with the. You would do that with the flu, though. Nat, sometimes yeah. you, you should be staying away at family yeah. events or whatever the case is. That yeah. kind of stuff. Not, not, not that I'm. Yeah, it's common sense prevails. But, 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 but I, can, I personally, well, I see that people are going to get COVID and there. just move yeah. on, aren't they? Mm-hmm. That, that's the way the world's gone. Oh, you're nothing worse. You're sitting there with someone's got a cold and staying. No, I agree. Away. I agree yeah. with that. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay, when you get back from being sued by Clive and you're in your hotel for seven days... Um, uh, He's got nothing better to do. You, yeah, you, don't you worry. You. If you need anything at all, um, let us know. We may pe- we'll start a GoFundMe for you. Maybe we'll put together a very fun little um, care package for you so you can pass the time. Are you excited? Oh, look, I just... Can't wait to open it. <laughs> Nathan will give you a call when he's on his way home from the nightclubs, okay? From the nightclubs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, he won't be able to come and visit because I'm in I'm yes. in quarantine. No, that's oh, right. He'll be out the window. That's all that's worry. stopping him. Doof, 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 doof. <laughs> Thank you so much, Premio. We'll talk again soon. See you, mate. Thanks, guys. Nathan, Matt and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.